Trust me, dude, hot girls are overrated. All females are sluts until proven otherwise. Don't get me wrong, they're fun for a little while, but they are a fucking headache. Money and looks can get you in the door, but game is what keeps you on our mind. Bitches never know what the fuck they want, man. Live from Philadelphia, your man, Donovan Sharp. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 541st edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. We are presented by Gorilla Mind Rush, the number one non-habit forming supplement on the market for energy, concentration, and productivity without the crash. If you want to support your production while also supporting the show, go to donovansharp.com slash Gorilla Mind Rush. The link is in the description. It is Monday, January 6th. 2020. It is good to have you guys in today. As always, we are streaming live to YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and OK.RU. We're not on Facebook today because I got put in Facebook jail over the weekend, and yes, it was 100% worth it. Go to my Facebook page and see why the many reasons I've been put in Facebook jail um, literally made my night, uh, made my day. It was, a, it was a good time worth serving the sentence. At any rate, however you're watching, Wherever you are watching from, thank you for making The Sharp Reality Live a part of your daily routine. A big thanks goes out to Roastmaster1. I forgot to create the slide in my haste, but Roastmaster1, who donated donated $100 over the weekend. Roastmaster is the second largest benefactor to the show, so we certainly appreciate his contributions. Roastmaster is second to Bob in Sacramento, who donated yet another $40, $40, which brings his total to well over $2,000 as far as donations to the show are concerned. So a huge thanks goes out to Roastmaster One and Bob in Sacramento for their contributions of $100 and $40 respectively. Thank you guys very much. Again, I never, ever, ever take your contributions for granted. Believe you me. Believe me on that. Later on in the show, <clears throat> I am going to discuss seven very extreme but very necessary measures that women need to take in order to gain the trust of a man of value for the specific purpose of making themselves a good candidate for a long-term relationship. And spoiler alert, better than 99.9% of women would never even consider doing this, which incidentally enough is why better than 99.9% of women are not in relationships with men they respect and love. So you'll definitely want to stick around for that. But we're going to start the show with an article that was submitted by Joey Q. And the article that Joey sent me, pardon me, is entitled, I Know Love is Real. Why is stunning comic Nicole Byer still single? It was written by Coco Khan, who writes for The Guardian. That's the website that this article was on. And you guys can find that link in the description as well. If you are looking at the screen... It is glaringly obvious why she's single. But for those of you watching with a disingenuous eye and thinking to yourself, well, it's not obvious to me why this stunning, beautiful specimen comic is still single. Allow me to say out loud what you people are afraid to even think, much less say. She's obese. That's it, guys. Mystery solved. She's fat. Nicole Byer is three bills easily. And the title of this article is the very thing that enables women like Nicole Byer to remain unmotivated to, to, to lose weight. Guys, it says stunning comment, comic, as if to imply that Nicole Byer is this hot girl who is utterly perplexed as to why dudes ain't trying to date her. So right out of the gate in the title, we're already running into a dishonest and disingenuous language and wordplay. So let's go ahead and break this bad boy down so we can all point and laugh at Miss Byer for knowing the truth and Miss Khan for pretending that she doesn't. In her Why Don't You Date Me podcast, the presenter and actor speaks with unusual candor about her search for a partner. She talks about racist algorithms, people's fear of rejection, and the difficulties of dating in L.A. Something that black women in particular, like to do when bitching and moaning about why men of all races don't date them 
is conflating race with sexual attraction. Yes, both men and women alike have their racial preferences in terms of what they're the most sexually attracted to. A lot of white guys like Asian girls. Some Mexican girls like white guys. There are white girls who like black guys and black guys who like white girls. The combinations are endless. But for Nicole and Coco to use language like racist algorithms is not only ignorant. Guys, this is irresponsible. Racist algorithms is implying that somehow men have been brainwashed or that there's some sort of formula or agenda that steers men away from black women. And if you're a regular here, you know that nothing could be further from the truth. You guys know this. Black women are the least preferred sexually for many reasons, but the main ones, the main reasons are A, they're too masculine, B, they think they should be the heads of household, C, they're not submissive, and D, most of them are fat. An attitude problem, masculine attributes, lack of femininity, and being overweight has nothing to do with a racist algorithm. Nobody's at Tinder or OkCupid programming men to stay away from fat chicks with an attitude problem and three kids. They do that all on their own, guys. This is another way that black women in particular continue to blame shift to make themselves feel better about the fact that they are at the very bottom of the sexual totem pole. They don't want to acknowledge that they're at the bottom and not a racist algorithm. They're the problem. Okay, they're the reasons why they're at the bottom of the sexual totem pole. It has nothing to do with a racist algorithm. That's the biggest crock of shit I've ever heard in my life. Let's continue. <clears throat> it continues, Nicole Byer regularly gets asked for dating advice. Not by my friend, she says, because why would you ask a person who's single about dating? That makes sense. There's actually some honest introspection there. But strangers ask me so many questions. I'm like, my podcast is literally called, Why Don't You Date Me? I don't know anything about dating. If I knew, I would be dating somebody. The podcast she is referring to is one of the world's funniest and most vulnerable. For the past two years, she has been sitting down with friends and fellow comedians to discuss her search for love and theirs, and is soon to hit her hundredth show. As the description of the podcast has it, Bayer, who is now 33, has been single for decades despite being smart, funny, and sexually voracious. Her honesty about this makes the, con makes the podcast feel radical. She is open about her yearning to be loved and her frustration at how difficult it is to find the right man or woman. At a time when dating is arguably more difficult than ever, she offers candor from the trenches. Gentlemen, women are a lot of things. Stupid is not one of them. And the fact that they, women, continue to feign ignorance on what men are sexually attracted to speaks to their laziness. Everything Coco Khan just listed about Nicole Byer's attributes have absolutely nothing to do with sexual attraction. Who gives a shit if she's sexually voracious? Uh, voracious? She's fucking fat. Ain't nobody trying to find out about a fat chick's sexual veracity. And being smart and funny, that's just another way of saying that she's a know-it-all broad who doesn't know when to shut the hell up. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong here, guys. There is some value in female intelligence. God, listen, I'm here to tell you, I've dated a lot of girls who are as dumb as a cardboard box, and that shit gets real old real quick. So I'm not going to sit here and, and I'm not going to sit here and act like or say that being with a woman who can, at the very least, hold a conversation with me without me having to explain how the government works or why chocolate milk doesn't come from brown cows, isn't a nice change of pace every once in a while. But female intelligence means absolutely nothing if that intelligence is wrapped in a package that's 5'2", 274. Yes, a woman with a sense of, a sense of humor is pleasant to be around. But if she's a ball-busting, wisecracking, wannabe comedian who never met a cheeseburger she didn't like, I don't give a damn about that sense of humor, guys. The podcast hasn't boosted her success at dating, the article continues, but she doesn't find this surprising. I'm not delusional, she says. I live in L.A. where you have the creme de la creme of bodies to choose from. If you are a shallow person, body type is a thing. Being a black woman is a thing. In 2014, OkCupid released data showing black women were judged least attractive by users receiving the lowest number of matches. I understand I'm not the ideal standard of beauty, she says. I'm not someone who people want to bring home to their mother. 
There are so many things working against me. So let me get this straight. A woman wanting a man who is 6'3", ripped, rich, good looking with an 18 inch cock has standards. But a man who wants a woman who isn't a wildebeest, that guy is shallow. Being sexually attracted to sexually attractive women is toxic masculinity. Get the fuck out of here with that. This chick is overweight, but she wants to blame male shallowness on why she's single. But I will give her credit on this. At least she kept it real when she said she's not delusional, right? At least she kept it 100 by admitting that she knows that men are not attracted to her. Then, of course, she hits us with the ideal standard of beauty as though this is a social construct and not programmed into the genetic hard drive of every male on earth. But at least she admits that there are things that work against her. I will give her that. She continues, I think that having my own money is demeaning to some guys as well as being loud and someone that other people like. Oh my God. This sounds full of myself, but my fans really like me. They come to my meet and greets and want to connect with me, and I try to give them a little bit of myself because I appreciate them. So any date would have to understand that people who watch my content share my life too. That's asking a lot. Nicole, baby girl, you having your own money isn't demeaning to men. What's demeaning to men is being seen with a slovenly unfit woman like yourself. So many Overweight black women like to say that men are intimidated by their education or their money in order to cope with the fact that men don't want to date them simply because they're overweight. And being loud isn't demeaning to men. It is a fucking headache. Nobody wants to be with a loud ass broad who doesn't know when to shut the fuck up because she's always trying to make people laugh. Deep down, Nicole knows why men don't want to date her. But instead of admitting the obvious, she uses the, oh, well, my money and loud personality intimidates men excuse when everyone around her knows the truth. The people around her, including Coco Khan, they need to quit gassing this chick up already. Unbelievable. Let me go back to that last slide. And if my date was a woman, she'd have to understand that I have a lot of female fans and she wouldn't be able to get jealous every time a woman talked to me. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Nicole understands very clearly that she will never be sexually attractive to men. So she's open to the idea of dating a woman. There, and listen, I'm here to tell you guys. There's no such thing as a lipstick lesbian, guys. And for those of you who are not up on the vernacular, a lipstick lesbian are lesbians that are hot. Lesbians that can date and marry pretty much any man they choose. There's no such thing as those guys, okay? They only exist in porn. Sexually attractive women who date other women are simply going through a phase. Okay? That's how this works. At the end of the day, chicks prefer a dick. That's all there is to it. Nicole is going to end up as a statistic, which is a woman who isn't sexually attractive to men who ends up dating women because she can't date men. It's pretty sad. The article continues, The fact that Bayer has been single her whole life is baffling. She's beautiful, hilarious, and warm, and every other area seems pretty close to taking the world, taking over the world. She is the host of the popular and extremely silly baking show, Nailed It, on Netflix, in which contestants who are not exactly capable bakers are asked to make, say, are asked to make, say, a cake in the shape of Napoleon, or a phenomenally lifelike sharp, shark. Since taking her first improv class in 2008, Bayer has had roles on 30 Rock and Saturday Night Live. She has written and starred in her own semi-autobiographical comedy show loosely exactly Nicole for MTV and later Facebook. And this year, her stand-up special was released on Netflix. On the podcast, Bayer is hilarious and boisterous. Her, her guests critique her dating app profiles, often expressing particular admiration for a picture that shows her climbing up a bookshelf in a cat suit. Oh my god. Holy smokes. She talks about sex toys and sex acts, pornography, and pole dancing, as well as her conversations with her therapist. Yo, ain't nobody trying... Again, a man with a sexual appetite does not want to hear a fat chick talking about toys that she sticks into her vajayjay. Nobody wants to hear fat chicks talking about sex. I'm going to sound like a broken record here, guys. But this article... 
keeps saying the same thing, but in a different way. What the fuck is so baffling about this fat chick being single? Coco Khan knows why she's single, but she's dancing around it. Then, then, Coco Khan, the writer of this article, she takes to lying when she says Nicole Byer is beautiful. But the way she wrote it was actually quite funny because it's almost like she tried to sneak it in there and then quickly move on to the other attributes that men don't give a damn about as if to imply that her beauty is just some obvious foregone conclusion. She's beautiful, hilarious, and warm. Listen, I'm sure Miss Byer is funny and I can't imagine a woman her side not being warm, but this chick ain't beautiful, man. Not even close. On a, again, Coco Khan, the writer of this article, she needs to quit this charade and keep it real here. But because we all know that women are allergic to the raw truth, unless they're drunk or mad at their friends, she's never going to be honest about Nicole Byer. Again, ladies, being hilarious and warm and boisterous, that's perfectly fine as long as you understand that you shouldn't overdo it. But if you're obese, none of that matters. I cannot emphasize this enough. It continues, I think... People are just as scared to make a move on a friendship as they are with a relationship. I think we are all terrified of being, reje being rejected. Could this be a reason, Miss Khan asks, why people won't date her? That they are simply afraid of being rejected by such an impressive, magnetic person? Oh, good, fu good fucking God, man. Are you kidding me with this? Are you serious with this? Miss Khan, Miss Khan is asking us with a straight face. That she's asking us, are men not dating her because of their fear of being rejected by such an impressive, magnetic person? Look, man, if, if Coco and Nicole are friends, Coco's not doing her any favors, man. For her to ask this ridiculous question is laughably pathetic, but not even Nicole can go along with this bullshit. Listen to this. So you're saying that these people maybe think I'm going to reject it, reject them, Nicole Muses? Hmm, that would be an interesting flip. I do sometimes have people ask me on the apps, is this really you? Are you really Nicole Byer? So I'd say, why would I use Nicole Byer as a catfish? Catfishing, see, she says, is where someone presents themselves in a different as a different person online by using someone else's picture, and they'd reply, why wouldn't you? You guys see how she's keeping it real here? She says, hmm, that would be an interesting flip, which means, hmm, I appreciate you making me feel better, but men aren't afraid of being rejected by an overweight female. Then she goes even further by flat out telling us that if she were to catfish someone, that she wouldn't use her own picture, which means she knows she's not sexually attractive to men, guys. Now, she did try to cover it up a little bit by describing catfishing as presenting herself as a different person. But I think we all know that she knows that different is just another way of saying better looking. But if I was going to pick a catfish, she continues, I would use a white lady's picture. That's how you would get more traction, a hot white lady. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So here we go with a sneak diss on white girls. I'd use a white girl's picture, a hot white girl's picture to get more traction. How about losing weight and get and growing out your real hair, Nicole? How about that? This is the problem with black women. They think that black men date white girls because they're white. Nah, baby girl. We date white girls because they're not black women. It's got nothing to do with some beauty standard. White girls are more feminine. They're more submissive. They're more accommodating. And they have real hair. Black men forgoing relationships with black women to date white girls has a lot less to do with what white girls do and more to do with what black women do not do. Black women are always screaming about self-hate. If you date white women, you hate yourself. Uh, pardon me. I mean, listen, correct me if I'm wrong here, but y'all are getting blonde wigs, color contacts, bleaching your skins, and pretending that you like pumpkin spice lattes and problem glasses, but somehow we as black men, we hate ourselves. I was talking to Minister Jap the other day, and he said something that was actually quite profound. 800 people watching. I appreciate you guys watching the show. He said something that was very profound, 
And I hope he doesn't feel some type of way for me sort of spilling the beans <laughs> before he and I get to discuss it on the air. Uh, because I don't want to steal his thunder here. But I think it's worth I think it's worth mentioning because it 100% applies to this whole black woman, white girl quagmire we find ourselves in. What Minister Jap said is that if a black woman wants to date white guys, she has to change. But if black men wants to date white, want to date white girls, we don't have to change a goddamn thing. Let me repeat that. Black women have to change to date white men. And black men don't have to change a goddamn thing if he wants to fuck with snow bunnies. And he is a thousand percent right. Black women love to lie about how they can swirl, even though we know that better than 99% of black women couldn't find a white man to date him or wife him up if they wanted to. Now, that's a topic for another day and time. But the point is, is that black women who do date outside their race, they have to change everything about themselves. The way they walk, how they talk, how they dress, the way they act, all that. But black men, oh, no, no, no. We can be exactly who we are, and white girls cannot get enough of us. I don't want to go any further into that discussion because that's going to be that's going to be a great discussion between myself and Minister Jab. Anyway, let's go ahead and finish up this shit show of an article. I tell Bayer, the author continues, there is evidence to suggest that the algorithms some dating apps use further entrench social hierarchies based on factors such as race and body type. Here we go again. The theory goes that as black women are chosen less, arguably due to white and Eurocentric standards of beauty and femininity, they are given a lower score for their desirability. This score, in turn, helps determine who they are shown, as apps want to show people others with similar scores, in the hope that this will encourage matches. In effect, this keeps everyone in their place. What? Buyer screams, my day is ruined! I had no idea, but it makes so much sense now that black women have, have, have had such a hard time on dating apps. It's because the algorithm is racist. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Unbelievable. This goes back to what I talked about at the, at, at the very beginning, which is black women blaming everything but themselves for their lack of dating options. Her being perpetually single, again, has nothing to do with Eurocentric standards of beauty and femininity. The fact that men don't want her have nothing to do with some secret agenda of dating apps to keep black women in their place. If that were the case, then how are how are black dudes steady smashing white ass? No, no. Nicole Byer is single because she's overweight, guys. Yes, being black does make it a little bit tougher because black women are the least preferred on and off of dating apps. Let's not pretend that that's not the case. But one of the main differences between men and women is that men, we acknowledge the truth about ourselves and we act accordingly. If we as men, if we have sexual market deficiencies, we improve ourselves in ways we have control over to give ourselves more options with women. But women blame everything and anything but themselves. It's the algorithm's fault. That's why, that's why guys aren't swiping right on me. No, sweetie. Men see your three chins and your weave and immediately thinks, no thanks, and swipe left. Often twice because it takes at least two swipes to get your rotund body off of a screen. Now, it is worth noting that Nicole Byer has since lost weight uh, since this article was published back in September, which shows us that she knows the real reason why she's single. But guys, if you Google her picture, Nicole Byer weight loss, you will see that she hasn't lost nearly as nearly as much weight or nearly enough weight as she needs to to make any significant difference. When we come back, I'm going to give you guys seven, seven things that women should do but would never do to gain a man's trust, a man of value's trust, <clears throat> and make them attractive prospects for long-term relationships with men of value. Plus, I will answer your super chat questions and shout out my chatters. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Gentlemen, if you want the blueprint on how to mold and shape a woman into exactly what you want and need, you need to get your hands on my seven-hour, five-part audio course, How to Build a Quality Woman from the Ground Up. This is seven hours of rock-solid intel on how to build a female brick-by-brick brick into the kind of woman you want and need. 
Part one deals with the vetting process. I teach you how to select the right candidate by telling you what to look for and more importantly, what not to look for in a woman. Part two deals with the training process. I take you step by step through the procedures that prepare a female for what it's like to be in a relationship with a man like you. I educate you on setting the tone early in order to reduce and possibly eliminate any and all behaviors that could potentially cause trouble in your relationship down the road. In part three, I instruct you on how to set and enforce boundaries and expectations. I teach you how to be direct when communicating your expectations in such a way that leaves nothing to interpretation. Part four will cover the sexual side of your relationship, how to dominate her sexually, and how you can make yourself unforgettable to her even if you're not the most well-endowed lover she's ever been with will be discussed extensively. I will also teach you the ins and outs of deep conversion game, which is the art of verbally and physically dominating her body, her mind, and her soul. And finally, part five will teach you how not to sabotage your relationship, how to maintain it, and what to do on the off chance that your woman gets out of line or out of pocket. Now, it's very important for you guys to understand that this course is based on personal experience. I'm not giving you guys hypotheticals or theories. These are techniques I use in my own relationship to this day, and anyone who follows me has seen that my techniques work and work well. Now, this isn't a cheat code or a magic bullet either, guys. This course isn't a turn her into the woman you've always wanted using this one weird trick, or how to make any woman your sexy, submissive sex slave with these three magical phrases. No, 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 that's not what this is. So if that's what you're looking for, keep your money. To train a woman to look, act, and submit like a woman should takes time, hard work, consistency, and maintenance. If you are willing to put in the work, go to DonovanSharp.com slash courses to get your hands on the only relationship guide that actually works by the only man who has shown that it works. Again, that's DonovanSharp.com slash courses. The link is in the description. Get exchanged to the chicks come out. The good girl disappeared and the nymph come out. That nigga young nigga who they whisper about. Getting checks made out to the biz account. Count Basie and Sammy Davis, niggas in Paris. Days off in April, but no Ferris. No Welcome back to the show, guys. Thanks for sticking around. You are watching the 541st edition of TSR Live on a Monday. We are multi streaming on five, only five different platforms today because I got put in Facebook jail. This weekend, I've, I think I've got a few hours uh, before I get out of Facebook jail. Uh, so we will be back on Facebook uh, for the next show. <clears throat> Guys, be sure to get your hands on my new audiobook, 16 Ways to Immediately Disqualify Her for a Long-Term Relationship. The book is absolutely free, won't cost you a dime. All you have to do is subscribe to my newsletter and the ebook is yours. Now, those of you on my list, you guys know that I don't blow up your inboxes with a bunch of nonsense. So you guys can be rest assured that you will not have to deal with emails from me every hour on the hour. I'm not the guy who's going to be just sending you just, you know, here's what I did last week. Here's what I did today. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to email you uh, about important things. If I have a sale going on, if I've released a new course, if a channel gets shut down, where to find me, upcoming events, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not just going to be shooting you a bunch of emails just for the sake of shooting you emails. All right, let's um let's shout out our super chats and say what's up to my to my members. Janet let uh Janet uh, I'm sorry, Janet Letalian just became a member of TSR Towers. I appreciate that. Then he donates uh 20 HKs. I don't know what HKs are. I guess I should have looked that up during the break. He says that Facebook episode was epic. Appreciate that. Nonstop Dre360 with the $2 super chat. She says she's so fat she has her own magnetic orbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I'm going to tell you what, man. Um, you got. <laughs> That's why I love your this this is why I love my audience, man. You guys are I love having an intelligent audience. Um I really do like having an intelligent audience. Freelance Ornan is in the house, the original TSROG. Snake 1000 is in the house. Brass Mustache says Mr. Hot Takes and Spreading That Truth Donovan. Appreciate that. Freelance Ronan, of course, says Facebook jail again. Damn, dude, listen, man. Facebook is at some point, Facebook is gonna fuck around and give me a life sentence, man. They really are. 
BK from the Rockies is in the house. Has three bills, three chins, etc. IJS. Kyle Mitchell says that is a lot of women. Women. She looks like a woman ate another woman. <laughs> Andrew Clark, good to see you in here. Good to see you in here. BK from the Rockies. Oh, so Vocal Observer says, where do I send an article to Donovan? Yeah, you can submit them to me on my website, DonovanSharp.com, or you can send them to me at TSR at DonovanSharp.com. Again, that is TSR at DonovanSharp.com. If, if you have an article that you want to submit, um, if you have an article idea, if you're an independent, uh, if you want music you want to submit to the show, if you want me to play the music on the show like I do uh, on my live shows, yeah, yeah, TSR at DonovanSharp.com. Again, that is TSR at DonovanSharp.com. That is the correct way to do it let's see what else we have here sharp assist says code and analytics cannot be racist you idiots <laughs> he also says i don't get these women the neg one says lol my bad wailing with a white woman's picture <laughs> unbelievable sharp assist again makes a very good point no one's going to pay for a dating app that ignores your preferences exactly like, she's going on and on. She's bitching and moaning about how, oh, the algorithms only show men the type of women they want. Uh, isn't that the idea? Right? Like, showing men pick, like showing men the kind of women they want, that kind of the idea. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Oh, Jenic Letalian says those are Hong Kong dollars. Okay, so he donated 20, 20 Hong Kong dollars. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. G-Ball50 with the... Went with the two dollar super chat says, "How can I become a member of the chat?" Yeah, go to go to my YouTube channel. Uh, just do a quick search for Donovan Sharp, and there's going to be a join button. Just click the join button, and there there are several different tiers you can join. Um, no matter what tier you join, you you can then chat. Um, I do not open the chat up to the public anymore. I don't do it anymore. It's it's something I used to do, um, and I've tried many many things to try to sort of insulate myself from trolls um, from trolls and haters and guys who just want to get me off track and, and ruin the show. And uh, I actually got this idea from Rich Cooper. Um, I didn't even know that you could do memberships until I saw it on his. And, uh, you know, fortunately, YouTube afforded me the uh, the ability to uh, to be able to uh, to have memberships. So that's how I'm going to do this. Taking a swig of my beet tomato strawberry juice. I've started my um, I've started my um, uh, my plant based diet today. No, it's not the vegan diet. I love leather. I'm not going vegan. I'm just what I'm trying to do is I just want to see if the plant based diet works for me. You guys have heard me talk about this on my show. Uh, today is when it starts. I wanted to get my blood test done before I got it started, but the soonest my doctor could get me in was next Monday, which is the 13th. So. Who knows? But uh, I'm going to have my blood taken now, and then I'm going to have my blood taken right before I go to the 21 convention. and uh, Or I'm going to have my blood taken a week from today, then then my blood taken uh, before I go to the 21 convention um, uh, here, in a, here in a few months. And uh, I'll share my results with you guys, and I'll make a decision. Hey, plant-based diet is for me. Plant-based diet is not for me. I'm going to have day-by-day -day pictures. I'm going to be tracking my progress. So, <clears throat> so uh, stay tuned for that. Freelance Ernest says the trolls are way too bad these days. They are. Levi Baloo with the $2 Super Chat says she ate the cookie monster. <laughs> you guys are killing me. All right. Well, let us get to our second topic. Let us get to topic number two. Men and women alike are well aware that sexual relations between men and women Never been more fucked up. Everybody knows it. I'm not breaking news here. That's just kind of how that goes. Now, most men, they handle this in one of a few ways. They either, A, stick their head in the mud and continue to do things that they've been doing and hope that one day that what they're doing will eventually work, which we, which we know never works. B, they completely check out and not have anything to do with women sexually. Or C, they take the red pill and learn how to become successful with women in this environment. Now, there are also men who take extreme measures like homicide, suicide, sometimes even both. These are your outlier situations like Elliot Roger, Alec Manassi, and Nicholas Cruz, and so forth. But by and large, most men remain willfully ignorant, stop talking to girls altogether, or they take the red pill. It's usually one of those three things. Now, women, on the other hand, pretty much handle it the same way across the board. They bitch and complain, but do nothing to change anything about themselves. They lie. They cheat, they behave badly, and they make no attempt to improve themselves as women, then turn around 
and ask where all the good men have gone after 10 plus years of sleeping around. Now, as a side note here, I want to say this as a side note. Say what you will about men who have checked out of the dating market, but at least they have found a solution that they feel works best for them, right? Like I used to be really, really hard on these guys, but not so much lately. While I do not endorse their solutions, I cannot blame them for doing what they do, okay? So for better or worse, most men tend to seek out solutions while men seek to complain and expect the environment to change in order to suit their wants and needs. Every woman out there, gentlemen, has these fantasies of the perfect relationship with a guy they respect and love. But contrary to popular belief, women don't really expect perfection. They may act like they do, but at the end of the day, they know that there's no such thing as the perfect guy. Don't get me wrong, guys. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I can sense a lot of you guys shaking your heads. Listen, I know that there are a lot of women out there who have dumped guys for insignificant reasons because they really are looking for Mr. Perfect. I'd even go as far as to say, I'd even go as far as to say that most women have dumped a guy they had no business dumping because of something trivial in hopes of finding an even better guy. Even still, do one one more time, Sean, do not text me while I am on the air. The next person who texts me while I'm on the air, I'm going to say her first and last name on the air, and I'm going to tell you not to text me while I'm on the air. Sean, do not text me when I am live. Thank you. Even still, most women are well aware of the fact that even the best man out there, even the best men out there, they have their faults. The best guys out there have their weaknesses. They have their frailties. Okay? And if the pros outweigh the cons, the cons they are willing to give a guy, right? If, or, or if the pros outweigh the cons, they're willing to give a guy an honest try. But here's the problem. While most women know how to get and keep a man's attention, they are grossly unaware of how to get and maintain a man's trust. Here's a bigger problem. They have no idea, women have no idea that they have to proactively gain a man's trust. They are utterly clueless that men in demand do not trust them when they first meet them. Most women foolishly think that all they have to do is tell a guy that they're faithful. All they have to do is say that they're trustworthy. All they have to do is tell a guy that she's honest. And men of value will just believe them simply because it came out of their mouths. Now, another misconception that women have of high-value men is that they do not have to earn his trust. They believe that these men abide by the foolish notion, well, I'll treat, I'll trust anyone until they give me a reason not to trust them. And unfortunately for women, they end up finding out the hard way when a guy they could see themselves being with for a long time ends up leaving them for what they assume is no apparent reason. That's, just, that's what she'll tell their friends. And because they have absolutely no idea that the reason he left in the first place is because she did nothing to earn his trust, she takes those same habits into the next relationship and makes the same mistakes to get the same results, rinse and repeat. Women already know that high-value men want obedient, submissive women who are in good shape, who can cook, clean, never deny them sex, don't disrespect them in public or private, and so on and so forth. This is common knowledge. But what women these days seem to be utterly clueless about is how to gain a man's trust and then keep it, or that it's even necessary to proactively build without being told. They think that if they look good, cook good, and give him sex whenever he wants, that's enough to secure a commitment from him. They also seem to be clueless about the fact that high-value men are well aware of how easy it is for women to cheat. And this is exactly why they assume that men automatically trust them based on their word alone. Well, how do high-value men know how easy it is for women to cheat? Well, there are two main reasons. The first reason is that the smartphone, everyone knows that smartphones has destroyed relationships. Number two, you don't think high-value men, high men have fucked the wives and girlfriends of scores of men? Girls can't help but tell on themselves. I can't tell you how many wives or girlfriends I fucked in Vegas who would tell me my husband thinks I'm here or my husband thinks I'm doing that or here's how I got away with coming over and sleeping with you tonight or today. Here's how, I, here's how I'm going to get out of my house. Here's how I'm going to justify uh, getting away from him for two or three hours and then come fuck you. They do this all the time and then, th then they wonder why high-value men don't trust him. Well, bitch, you're spilling the secrets. Not that we needed you to do that, but it is what it is. So what I'm going to do today, 
What I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell women what they need to do to gain a man's trust so that he will want to commit to her long term. Like I said in the title, guys, better than nine out of 10 women would never, ever do these things. And this is why I rarely give advice to females. But Uncle Donovan, Uncle Donovan wants to help the 0.00001% of women out there who actually want to learn. Believe it or not, guys, these women are out there. They do exist. They're few and far between, but they do exist. Now, let's get one thing straight right out of the gate. Every woman wants to be in a relationship. A long-term relationship is always their end game. Don't get it twisted. That's how this is. They can talk all they want about how they want to sleep around to get it out of their system. No woman ever wants to be fucking six guys. They only want to be fucking one. Even if she is sleeping with six different guys, she only wants to be with one long term. That's the one who gets anal sex. That's the one who gets treatment. That's the one who gets parking lot blowjobs. I'm going to tell women, less than one half of 1% of women, what needs to be done to gain a man's trust. If a man of value... Ladies, listen, if a man of value does not trust you, he is not going to get into a long-term relationship with you. He's going to fuck you for a little while, and he might even take you on a trip or two. He might take you on a, be a, a weekend getaway, right? He might take you to Canada, you know, right? He might take you on a beach trip. But at the end of the day, if he doesn't trust you 100%, he will not commit to you, and that's all there is to it. Better than 99.9% .9 of women who hear this, you guys are all going to laugh at this stuff. You guys are going to say to yourself, oh, no way. Donovan's off his rocker. He's full of shit. That's fine. It's perfectly fine. But the one-tenth of one-tenth of one-tenth of one percent who has a feeling that this might be necessary, keep listening. But for the men watching, important, but, but, but for the men watching, okay, it's also important to understand that women aren't going to do this stuff for just anybody. You Listen, you're, listen you got to be the real deal. You got to be confident. You got to be you got to be masculine. You have to you have to demand her best. Okay? Women have to know you're the real deal. They have to see her confidence. They have to see that you demand her best. She has to trust your judgment. She has to see that you can keep her in line. So, ladies, now that you know you've got your guy, now that you know he is the genuine article and you see potential, here are seven things necessary that 99.9% .9 of women will never do to earn a man's trust. Just a word of warning here, quickly. This is extreme, okay? But men in demand these days know the technology available to women in the palm of their hands makes cheating and not getting caught very easily. Very easy. So let's go ahead and get this party started. Number one, check in every few hours with a picture and a text. To trust you, he has to know where you are, what you're doing, and who you're doing it with. Now, the reason this is necessary is because I've been the other man, okay? I have fucked plenty of wives who tell me, oh, he'll never find out. Steve, Steve, Steve doesn't ask me where I am or what I'm doing, right? Charles never, you know, he never cares what I'm doing half the time anyway. And the way she got away with it, it was crazy. Listen, listen. I, I hear stories like this all the time. And before I, listen, but, and before I go any further, before I go any further, spare me the moralistic narrative. Oh, Donovan, you shouldn't fuck wives. Fuck you guys. If listen, if a wife wants to cheat, she's going to cheat. If she doesn't fuck you, she's going to fuck somebody else. That may as well be you. There's no such thing as karma. So you moralistic fucks out there, you can spare me with the karma nonsense. You're being a coward. And hiding behind karma to keep from taking advantage of easy targets who literally throw their panties at you is being a coward. Anyway, this one chick, and I've actually talked about this in a previous episode. I think it's in my archive. This one chick, she would take pictures with her with a friend of hers with the same outfit. She'd do it at like Starbucks or at the mall or whatever. So when she came to see me, her friend would post those pictures that she took days before and tags her and her husband on Facebook. So the husband sees the pictures of her at Starbucks wearing the same outfit that she left the house with when she came and fucked me. 
So he assumes that she's at Starbucks drinking the lattes with her bestie when in actuality, she's in a hotel room with me getting her back blown out. Believe it or not, ladies, most high-value men know that you're promiscuous. They know that you sleep around. Many say it, most don't, but we know. Men of value do not have time for this. He's not, listen, a man of value is not going to require you to check in. He's just not going to do it. He doesn't have time for all this nonsense. If you want to show him that he can trust you, you have to be proactive. Check in at work. Hey, babe, take a selfie. Just got to work. Got a hefty workload. Devin will send me her schedule every day. So I'll know when she's in a meeting, when she's working on a project, whatever. So if I don't hear from her, you know, so if I don't hear from her in three to four hours, I look at my phone. She's in a meeting. Could she be doing other stuff? I don't know. Maybe. But as far as I know, she's as transparent as she's transparent as scotch tape. Now, why does she do this? Why does she do this? And by the way, I can't really think of the last time I didn't hear from her for three to four hours. But why does Devin do this? She wants there to be no doubt in my mind that she's doing what she's doing and that she's where she says she is. Ladies, if there is any doubt in his mind whatsoever about your trustworthiness, he's not going to lock you down. He might not say it. But if you're disappearing for hours at a time with no explanation, don't be surprised if he says, hey, listen, you know what? Let's just be friends. And five percenters, we know the bullshit explanations, right? Oh, my friend is going through a breakup and he needs me. Then four hours later, she's calling you, telling you she's too bored to come over. Or, oh, I got called into work and they really need me. And she texts you the next day telling you she fell asleep when she got back home. Again, he's not going to call you out on it. But he's going to next you and, and then you're going to wonder why. Ladies, you always wonder why. You guys always wonder why a guy who seems to like you all of a sudden goes cold and ghosts on you. Well, it's because you're disappearing for hours at a time doing God knows what with God knows who. And act like we don't know that, that, that you guys act like we don't know if we're not there then we don't know. We do. We're not stupid. Just because we don't catch you with your hand in the cookie jar doesn't mean we don't know you've stolen the cookies. So check in periodically to let him know your whereabouts. The more frequent, the better. Number two. Uh-oh. This is where I'm going to lose 99.9% .9 of women. Give him access to your phone. Yes, let him have access to your phone. No password, no lock. A telltale sign that a girl is a slut is if she puts her phone face down all the time or has a lock or a code on her phone. Some girls say, well, that's my personal phone and that's my private business. He has no right to that information. And you're right. He doesn't. But he does have the right to dismiss you as a slut if you're hiding shit from him. And if you've got nothing to hide, like all of you say you do, then you'll have no problem giving him access to your phone. It's that simple. Listen, most cheating is done on phones, guys. Dating apps, Tinder, OkCupid, Ashley Madison, WhatsApp, Snapchat. Giving him access to your phone alleviates most of that doubt. Anytime you're in your man's presence, okay? Anytime you're in your man's presence, ladies, you have to know this. And if you don't allow, and if you don't, allow me to clue you in. But if you're at your man's house watching TV or a movie or whatever, you start messing around on your phone, he's going to assume you're talking to another guy because this is what women do. Listen, he can't prove what you're doing. He can't prove what you're not doing. But if, a, but, but if he's a man with red pill awareness, which is the kind of man you want to be with in the first place, he's going to assume that you're texting someone you shouldn't be texting. Some girls might say, well, I could be texting a friend of mine. Yeah, and that friend of yours could be your fuck friend you're setting up, you're setting up a meetup with after you leave his place because you're tired and have to get up work, uh, get up, uh, get up early for work tomorrow morning. Leave no doubt, ladies, and give him access to your phone. If you really want to be with him, if he's really the guy you can see yourself with long term, then you're going to you're going to have to give up your privacy and eventually all of your autonomy. If you don't want to give him access to your phone, fine. That's your choice, and that's your right. But don't be surprised when he tells you it's time for the two of you to go your separate ways. If you don't want to give him access to your phone, then you're not ready to be in a relationship of consequence with a man of value, period. Again, you might have a great relationship with a great guy. With a great guy. You guys might seem solid. Everything is going great, but for some reason, he just won't commit long term. 
And when you put the squeeze on him to propose, he leaves. And then girls ask, why? Why did he leave? Everything was, everything was great. It's because he doesn't fucking trust you. That's why. You're always on your fucking phone. And when you are, you don't think he notices that you turn your phone away from him when he looks in your direction. He knows you're doing that because you're doing shit you're not supposed to be doing. Fucking other guys. Texting ex-boyfriends. Texting past fuck buddies. High value men are not going to commit to you if they do not trust you 100%. And by the way, by the way, maybe a lot of you are first time listeners or, or don't follow me on social media and you're thinking, okay, Donovan, you're telling us to do all this shit, but there's no way Devin does this shit for you. Oh, yes, she does. Everything I'm talking about, Devin does. I have full access to her phone. She checks in wherever she goes, whether it's work, an errand, wherever. She also has a GPS tracker on her phone. I know exactly where she is at all time, at all times. And guess what? This was actually her idea, not mine. She suggested the key logger and the GPS. The reason she did that is because she wanted to be in a relationship with me. She was proactive about it. She even gave me access to her security system to her apartment before we lived together. Again, her idea. I knew when she left home, I knew when she came home, and I had access to the cameras in her apartment. I never asked or required her to do any of these things because I wasn't thinking about a long-term relationship. Okay? She's a dude, she you know, she was she was a hot woman in her 30s that I liked to fuck with an unbelievable ass and huge tits. No, no, no. She was proactive because she wanted a relationship with me. She did this because she wanted to leave no doubt that I could trust her. But Donovan, that's just too much access. Then you're not ready to be in a relationship of consequence with a man you respect and love long term. Look, man. Look. If you're if you're really if you're really not ready to settle down yet, then all of this is going to sound absolutely crazy, guys. But if you meet a guy you know you want to be with long term, you'll have no problem doing these things. I need my privacy. You're not ready. I don't need him knowing where I'm at all the time. Well, why not? If you've got nothing to hide, then why not? Because you're fucking somebody else and want to be able to without him finding out. The only reason why, the only reason, ladies, by the way, the only reason you guys want your privacy is so that you can reserve the option to fuck around without him knowing. That's it. That's the only reason why. Outside of medical information or serious family shit, which can both be handled over the phone or at the hospital, there is nothing you need to keep private from him except for the fact that you're arranging a meetup with your ex or a Tinder date, guys. Two and a half hours gone in the afternoon, you're at your ex is getting butt fucked. Three hours gone at night, you're on a Tinder date. He will assume this if he has red pull awareness. And again, this is the kind of man you want and need in your life. You can say this is extreme. You're goddamn right it's extreme. But ladies, we live in extreme fucking times. And if you're a woman and you really want to be in a relationship with a man of value, then he has to trust you. Men of value do not commit to women that they do not trust. Yes, this is extreme. Yes, this is going to cost money. But for the right man, it will absolutely be worth it to you. Number three. Keep your interactions with men to yourself. Especially if you're attractive. Listen, if you're an attractive woman... Ladies, your man knows men talk to you because they want to fuck you. Even if you innocently entertain conversation, you're violating his trust. Okay, Devin actually saw a post on Reddit. There was a woman who was having trouble with gym equipment. And each time, each time she had trouble with her equipment, there was a man who helped her. She went on and on and on about how it was so nice to have men help her for no reason at all. Guys, she's full of shit. She's obviously attractive. And she wanted everyone to know that she was attractive. She knows every one of those guys would butt fuck her right in the gym if given half the chance. She knows this. If you are an attractive woman and you talk about you talk about the stuff around your man. Oh, I had lunch with Kevin in sales today. Or oh, my boss wants to start meeting with me one on one to discuss my future. Or oh, I ran into Justin at the coffee shop. He knows these men want to fuck you. But he's my boss and it's professional. Women fuck their bosses all the time. It's almost commonplace. When you tell him this stuff and you sense that he's feeling some type of way, now you're going to start giving him reasons as to why you'd never fuck him. Oh, he's fat. He's overweight. He's not my type. 
He's married. He has kids. He doesn't want me. Red pill aware men, we know that's bullshit. We know that the more a woman tries to convince you that she doesn't want to fuck a guy, the more she wants to fuck said guy. Wait, you had another one-on-one -on -one with your boss and he took you to lunch this time? Oh, babe, you have nothing to worry about. He's short, scrawny, he's ugly, he's balding, blah, 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 blah. Then six months later, you find out she's cheating on you with who? Her boss. Ladies, when you talk about your day, do not talk about interactions with men outside of strictly work-related topics that are relevant to your story. Your man knows why men talk to you. It's not something you can control that's not your fault. Men are men, women are women. But deep down, you know the reason you talk about this stuff is to put him on notice. You want him to know that other guys want to fuck you. And you think this makes you more attractive to him. Newsflash, ladies! You're not helping your cause. The things that make a man attractive to you do not make you attractive to him. I say this all the time. Male attention is easy for women, especially attractive women. So while you find him more attractive when women flirt with him, sexual attraction is not symmetrical. He's not going to find you more attractive because you tell him indirectly your boss wants to fuck you. He's not going to want you more if you tell him Justin at the coffee shop wants to fuck you. Male attention is par for the course for women, and he knows it. Don't talk about this stuff. He knows that if you're entertaining conversations with men, you are opening doors for you are opening the door for behaviors that lead to cheating, and you both know it. Which leads me to number four. In public, when you are with him, do not talk to any male except for him. When you're out in public, ladies, with your man, don't make conversation with other men. Well, what if he asks me what time it is or asks for directions? Tell him my boyfriend knows. Ask him. Well, what if I'm just being polite? Sweetheart, you're not being polite. You're attention whoring because you know the only reason men talk to you in public is because they want to fuck you. When you make conversation with men in public, when you are with your man, you are outright disrespecting him. If you're at a restaurant and you have a male waiter, shut the fuck up and let him order for you. Well, what if he gets my order wrong? Then you look your man in the eye and say, honey, I didn't want my steak medium. I wanted it well done. And if he is a man of value, he will handle it for you. Now, if you're out by yourself, you're obviously not going to be a mute, right? Like, let's not get disingenuous. But if you are with him in public, you already know he handles his shit. You already know he has a domineering persona. You know he's handling his business and your business. So there is no reason for you to talk to other men in public when you are with your man in public. Period. I don't give a shit. Let him handle everything. Defer to him. Let him order your food. If you guys are taking a flight and you have a male flight attendant, same thing. Unless, of course... You fly Spirit. <laughs> and by the way, I love Spirit Airlines. I've never had a I've never had a bad experience on Spirit. Knock on wood, but every male flight attendant seems to be gay on Spirit. Great. Great. Dude, I'll let Devin dude yuck it up with the gay flight attendant, and they're always cool as hell to me. Right? OMG, this is so extreme. You girls might out there, you guys, you girls out there might be screaming and hollering. Yes, this is extreme. But extreme times like I said earlier, means extreme measures. Because by talking to other men, when you're with your man, you're being disrespectful and you're violating his trust right in front of him. Because he's thinking, well, if she's this chatty and talkative with men right in front of me, then what is she doing when I'm not around? Number five. This is a big one. Do not ask him to go to the bar or the club or on girls' trips. I had a friend of mine in Vegas. His girlfriend was always wanting to go to the bar or the club. Now, he always told her no because he knows that bars and clubs are sausage fests, right? She was, I don't know, she was half decent looking. But male thirst makes fives look like nines. So as soon as she walks into a bar or a club, she's got cock sitting her right in the face from every direction. Well, the reason she started asking this stuff is because she wanted a branch swing. She had lost the traction for him and wanted to go out and find another branch before letting go of him. Again, we call this branch swinging, monkey branching, etc., etc. 
And by the way, by the way, if your girl asks you to go to the bar or the club or go on a weekend Vegas girls trip or to a concert with her friends or any place we all know she'll get male attention, your relationship is already over, guys. Dude, Rolo, Rolo Tomasi and I, we discussed this a while back. If she asks, she's already lost attraction for you. You may tell her no, and she may heed you, but she'll ask again. And at some point, eventually she'll just go even when you tell her no. You can't control women, guys. You can only control what you do. And if you keep your value high and keep her in line, then you'll reduce the odds of her wanting to go out with her friends to look for male attention. But sometimes even that's not enough. This is what you're going to have to resolve in your minds to accept. We cannot hold a gun to a woman's head. All we can do is kick life's ass and continue to be the five percenters that we are. Well, maybe she just wanted to go out and have fun. Oh, of course she does. She wants to have fun getting banged out in the bathroom at the club. I had a podcast a while back <laughs> with a limitable man talking about how girls get together and go to the club. We're just here to have fun and dance. No, you're there to get cock. Think I'm full of shit? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you guys this. And ladies too. Because I know you guys are just incredulous right now. Would girls ever go to a club if there were no guys allowed? Hmm? Do you think they'd ever go to a bar for girls night out if there were only women there? Of course not. So if you suggest going to a bar or a club, number one, you're not ready for a relationship. Or you're ready to be out of a relationship. And number two, you're telling your man you're looking for his replacement. Guys, if Devin ever asks me to go to the bar or the club, I'll say sure. But when you come back, I'll have your shit packed up because you're the fuck up out of here. Dude, fuck that noise, man. If you want to go to the bar or the club, if you want male attention, if you re listen, if you want to go to the bar or the club, you want male attention. That's that's what that really is. And if you really love and respect the man you're with, then you shouldn't need male attention outside of his. Well, what if he's not giving me attention? Then you're not trying hard enough. Anytime Devin wants to have sex, she showers, she puts on perfume, she throws on a pair of hoops, heels, and lipsticks, and walks into the living room stark naked. That's how this goes. If you want your man's attention, you have to earn it. And by the way, by the way, I need to I actually need to pick out Devin's heels for tonight. Anyway, if you absolutely have to go out and shake your ass with your girlfriend, then you're not ready for a relationship, and that's okay. But again, don't complain that he's not committing to you when you're showing him you're not ready to commit. Asking your man or a guy you're seeing to go to the bar or the club lets him know that you're not ready. He'll let you go to the club. Then he'll let you go all together. Number six. Hmm. This is a big one. Never talk about your sexual past. Oh, this is a big one. Now, girls can get behind this. Right? They can certainly, oh, never talk about your sexual past. But they don't endorse it because they want to build his trust. Oh, no, no, no. Girls endorse never talking about their sexual past to cover up their, to cover up their slutty tracks. Women who talk about their pasts with men they like automatically put themselves out of the running for a long-term relationship. You're not only a slut, you're a proud slut. Well, what's wrong with sleeping with a few guys, Donovan? Nothing. Nothing wrong with that. But men of value don't want to know about the threesome you had with Kevin and Sales and his manager at the office one night. We don't want to know about the football team running a train on you in college. We don't want to know that you fucked seven guys in seven days or that you fucked two guys in 24 hours. Well, what if he asks? A five percenter, a man with red pill awareness, will never ask you about your sexual past because we know you will always lie about it. A 5%er knows you're a slut. A telltale sign of a man of value who doesn't is a man who doesn't express concern about your sexual past. Guys like us, we know we're going to find out one way or the other because most of you can't keep your mouth shut. Most sluts can't hide their slut tells, however covert they may be. At some point, we're going to find out, so we're not going to ask you in the first place. But if you proactively talk about your sexual pasts, you are taking yourself out of the running to be in a long-term relationship with him, period. Dude, I've dated girls who have told me how many times they've cheated, who they've cheated with, how they got away with it. Then three months later, ask me why we're not boyfriend and girlfriend. What? Because you bragged about how you cheated on your last boyfriend with his best friend and his boss. That's why. Well, why are we not in a relationship? Because you bragged to me, you bragged to me about how you cheated on your boyfriend with me. <laughs> you kidding me with this? Like, are girls really this oblivious? 
These girls never realize that as soon as they start telling me these stories, I have already placed them in the fuck buddy category as an I'm never going to call you for anything but sex and sex alone. Means I'm coming over, I'm butt fucking you, and then I'm leaving. I'm not sticking around to chit chat. I'm not sticking around to watch TV. I'm getting the ass and getting the fuck out of there because that's all you're good for. If you want to build a man's trust, do not talk about your sexual past. Again, if he's a 5% or if he's a red pill where I'm in, he's not asking. And if you've got what you think is a solid guy and he asks, do not tell him. Just say I've made a few mistakes like most women, but I really like you and your opinion of me means the world to me. I don't want you to think less of me, so I'd rather not talk about it if that's all right with you. He's not going to press the issue after that. And if he does, you've got a beta male on your hands, which means you're not going to be with him in long term in the first place. Guys, listen, ladies, he can't hold something against you that he doesn't know about. And he can make all the assumptions he wants. You may have fucked 30 guys. You may have fucked 300 guys. But if you don't tell him, he doesn't know for sure. And if you do the things you need to do to earn his trust and be wary of and eliminate your whole tendencies, you're not going to end up telling on yourself. Girls will handle the notch count question perfectly, but then turn around and be on their phones all the time. They'll disappear for hours on end or talk about another team building trip you took with your boss. And at some point, he's going to figure your slutty ass out. That's just what happens. You also need to be very careful about the stories you tell him that could potentially involve guys you fucked. Because 5% or, or not, men are going to put two and two together. And if you mention too many stories with too many guys or too many stories with the same guy, that how many guys have you slept with question, that's going to come up eventually. Think about what you say before you say it, ladies. Don't talk about things that involve guys you've been sexually involved with. And for God's sake, do not proactively talk about or brag about your sexual pasts. Again, women who openly discuss their sexual pasts automatically eliminate themselves as far as options for long-term relationships with men of value or concern. Oh, they'll fuck you all day long, but he ain't committing. And when he starts to distance himself, you'll say, damn. I let him see my phone. I never turned him down for sex. I never got out of pocket. Yeah, I may have mentioned Justin at the coffee shop a few times. I may have mentioned my boss a couple of times. And we had an open dialogue about our sexual pasts, but why did he not commit? Well, the reason he dumped you is because you talked about your sexual past. Ladies, <laughs> ladies, you guys are steady complaining about how about men holding your pasts against you. Oh, why does he keep bringing this up and I can't believe he holds my past against me? Well, the reason he holds your past against you is because you told him about your past. 5% or not, no guy wants to know about your previous sex life. We don't want to know about how you hooked up with your best friend and her boyfriend when you all got high on blow. We don't want to hear about how you gave a guy a blowjob at the club in the bathroom. We don't want to know how you got anal in the parking lot at work while your boyfriend waited for you inside. We don't want or need to know this stuff. They may laugh and chuckle with you, but in the back of his mind, he's thinking, dude, this girl's a fucking hoe. The only thing she's good for is sex. Now, at this point, most women are probably thinking, okay, this is extreme. But if this is a guy I really like, I could see myself doing things, doing these things to gain his trust. I don't mind checking in so he knows where I am or what I'm doing. I don't mind giving him access to my phone because I want him to know because I want him to know that I'm up to anything, right? I could definitely avoid telling him about my intentions or interactions with men that have nothing to do with work. I don't have any reason to talk about talk to other men in public when I'm with him, so that won't be hard. I really like him, so going to the club or the bar or a weekend girls trip, I can certainly do without, and I can definitely avoid talking about my sexual past because it's something I do with most guys anyway. And if you're thinking this, if you're thinking this as a woman, if you're thinking, all right, I can do this, good for you. You've made it to, I don't know, maybe the, you've made it to the, to, to the 10% of women who truly understand why proactively building trust is necessary, is necessary to keep a man in demand around. But I'm about to eliminate just about all of you with number seven.
If, if, if Ladies, if you're out there thinking, yeah, I got this. I got the cheat code. Buckle the fuck up. <clears throat> the seventh way to proactively build ironclad trust with the man you want to be in a long-term relationship that 114% of women would never, ever do. Get off social media. All of it. Don't deactivate them. Don't put them to sleep. Don't put them on hold. Delete them. Erase them. As in wipe them from existence. This is the one that separates the girls who think they want to be in a relationship from the ones who actually do. It's hard enough for women to meet these expectations as it is. There's no question about that. I've never said any of this would be easy to do. But asking whether or not, but asking rather, whether or not you would delete your social media accounts to build and keep his trust, that will tell you very quickly whether or not you're serious about him. Gentlemen, or ladies rather, social media platforms have quite literally destroyed you guys. Not only are you guys addicted to the constant validation you get, from posting pictures of yourselves, your affairs, your cheating, and your hookups with old flames, they are all facilitated by social media. And then people act surprised when they hear that women use social media to cheat. Well, what do you expect when girls, what do you expect to happen when girls advertise themselves? Well, it's the same thing that happens when a company advertises their product on TV. They get customers. And ladies, you need to get rid of all of them. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, Snapchat, everything. You need to have zero online presence. If someone Googles your name, all that should come up are advertisements for criminal background checks. That's it. A woman who is on social media is a woman who is still on the market and high value men know and understand this. Guys, social media is for male attention and advertising and you guys know it. If you really want to be with him, then you have no need for male attention. Well, can I check it once a month? No. Want them once a month turns into once a week, and then that turns into once a day. And then before you know it, you're back on social media. Well, how will I stay in touch with friends and family? Oh, I don't know. Maybe call or text them. I mean, if they mean enough to you, you'll have their phone number, and they'll have yours. You want to separate yourself from all the other women he's seeing? Ladies, you want to show him that you're serious about him? You want to ensure that he never, ever doubts or mistrusts you? This, deleting all social media, this is the ultimate sign of a woman who is truly all in. Again, Donovan, you're off your rocker. That's fine, man. Like, I get it, man. Like, like dude, nobody is saying that you have to do this, okay? But if you have found a man that you know is worth committing to long-term, and all girls know them when they see them, sluts or not, a woman's slutty past and inability to pair bond with guys anymore does not strip them of the ability to know when a guy is high value or not. And they can spot a fake a mile away. They only ignore their instincts when they're desperate, lonely, and horny. But if you really want this man to take you seriously as a woman that he can trust and see himself with long term, then these are the things that are necessary. And if you do these things proactively, that definitely, let, that definitely lets him know that you are serious. Because how many women have suggested these things to him? Spoiler alert, none. And if you're the one who says, hey, I'm going to put spy software on my phone and give you access to the account so that you can see that I'm faithful to you at all times. Ladies, that's going to make an impression on him. And if you can keep it up for an extended period of time and let him see that you're not just faking the funk, you'll get that long-term commitment that you want. Again, I want to make clear. I want to make this clear. Most five percenters, most men of value aren't going to tell you that these are their requirements. I would even go as far as to say that most high value men don't realize how much these measures would increase their trust in any particular women. But if you are proactive in your approach, and again, this is assuming you want to be in a relationship with him. But if you do these things without having to be asked to do them, it clearly tells these men that you are serious about keeping and building his trust and that you are serious about being in a rock-solid relationship that is built on trust. You're not only going to drastically increase the odds of him committing to you, you're going to separate yourself from 104% of other women that are out there. Here's another tip. Pay attention, ladies. As I finish my beet tomato strawberry juice, 
Don't advertise these things to your girlfriends, okay? There's no need to hide these things from them, but what you do to gain and maintain your man's trust is none of their business unless they come to you for advice. I'm not saying hide around the corner to check in with him so they don't see. No, check in with, check in with him when necessary, okay? They're not going to be worried about it, okay? They're not going to be worried about what you're doing on your phone anyway. By the same token, there's no need to broadcast it either. Okay, I'm checking in with Donovan. The reason I'm telling you, ladies, not to advertise this stuff is because your friends are not in the point zero 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 one percent of women who understand why these things are necessary. All they're going to do is tell you what a fool you are for, for, for committing to a controlling, possessive man and toxic masculinity and misogyny and all the rest of that nonsense. Never mind the fact that you're doing this of your own free will and volition. Your friends will assume that, he, that he's putting a gun to your head because what you're doing is not something most women just do freely on their own. What you're doing is not typical of, of the typical female. How you keep your man's trust is your business. There's no need to hide it, but there's no need to advertise it either. And if your girlfriend comes to you and asks, hey, Sarah... Uh, look, I noticed you and Derek have a solid relationship and that he really genuinely trusts you. How can I get Eric to trust me like Derek trusts you? Then you can tell her. But giving your friends, your girlfriends unsolicited advice in this regard, it's always a bad idea. Listen, I tell my guys all the time, you can't give your friends red pill advice if they don't ask you for it. You can't just start talking about red pill concept, concepts out of the blue because they always balk at it and they look at them like they're crazy. Your girlfriends are going to do the same thing if you just say out, if you just out of the blue, unprovoked, I let Donovan know where I'm in and where I am and what I'm doing at all times. They'll accuse you of humble bragging and your message get, gets lost and subsequently invalidated by him, by them. Not that it wouldn't anyway, but unsolicited advice has never been effective in any capacity. Now, some women might ask, well, what if I do all these things, but he won't commit? Well, that probably means one of two things. A, he's not ready to commit. B, he doesn't like you enough to commit to you. Listen, some high-value men are just not ready to be in relationships yet. They're happy with their bachelor lifestyle, and they'll settle down when they are damn good and ready. Now, maybe he'll grow out of that phase like most men do at some point, or maybe he won't. There are some guys out there who will never want to be in a committed relationship, and if that's the case, there's nothing to do about that, ladies. So at that point, now you have a choice to make. You can stick around and wait for him to be ready while continuing to keep his trust, or you can go your separate ways. Listen, ladies, I get it, man. I get it. You don't want to spend your prime years waiting on a man who doesn't want a committed relationship. I don't blame you. And even though these techniques will make an impression on him, it's not the silver bullet. It's not the cheat code. If a man isn't ready to commit, he's not going to commit no matter what you do. That's life. Now, on the other end of that spectrum, is that he's not committing to you because he doesn't like you enough to commit to you. Okay, so he trusts you 100%, but maybe you're a little overweight. Maybe he doesn't like your family. Maybe he doesn't see a future with you. Maybe you can't cook. Maybe you won't cook. Maybe you're not feminine enough. Maybe you're only doing four of the seven things I've talked about today consistently. Or maybe he likes another woman he's seeing more than he likes you. She could, she should, she could be younger. She should be, she could be hotter. She could cook, you know, she could cook better. I mean, who knows? There could be any number of reasons he doesn't like you enough to commit to you. But like I said, this ain't the cheat code. If you want him to increase the odds of him liking you enough to commit, then maximize the things that are under your control. Hit the gym hard and watch your diet to get and maintain a great figure. Learn to cook. Dress more feminine. Be more available to him. Be kinder. Have a more docile disposition. There are a lot of things that are under your control, ladies, that you can improve to increase his attraction to you. In the end, ladies, this is what's necessary to, to swing the odds in your favor in terms of getting him to commit. Like I said before, most men, most men of value won't ask you to do these things. But if you're proactive about it, you'll show him how serious you are, right? You'll show him how ready you are for a relationship. Maybe he's not ready to commit. Maybe he'll never commit. Or maybe he just doesn't like you enough to commit. But as we all know, nothing in life is guaranteed. But if you want to increase your odds, then these are the things that are necessary. As I said before, most of you won't do all of these things consistently. Oh, sure. Some of you will do some of these things some of the time. 
Some of you might do all of these things sometimes, and some of you might do all of these things at separate times for shorter periods of time. And while that might be beneficial to you in the short term, it's not going to serve you in the long term. But just like you guys know which men fake their high value, we know which women are the pretenders. We are very adept at picking up on a woman's patterns. And if you're not doing all of these things consistently all the time, do not be surprised when we do not commit. All right, 1,157 people watching. Let us go to the Super Chat. Gravelite with the $5 Super Chat says, Love or hate feminism, it weeds out the fat ones and simps easier. Feminism has actually made vetting much easier for me. Next is the game course. Very good. Appreciate that $5 Super Chat. The Neg One with the $25 Super Chat says, Thank you for your course and words of wisdom. Men understand that being aware is easy. Applying your tactics and training women is the real, is the real grind. Maintain your dominance, trust, but always verify. Thank you, Don, for everything you do. Appreciate that, the neg one with the $25 super chat. Welcome, Chris Duffy, who uh, just became a member of the channel. He now has trap pri uh, chat privileges. Freelance Ronan with the $5 super chat says, drop it into the jar, bro. Appreciate that, Freelance, as always. I, you know what? I got to start adding up Freelance Ronan super chats because he's been here since the start. Like, Freelance has been, he's watched my show since since I was on SoundCloud. Christopher Duffy says, so I guess Devin deleted her social media. Uh, yeah, Chris. Like, what the fuck would I tell you? And again, Chris, understand this. I'm a shoot, I'm a shoot first, ask questions later kind of guy. I'm a disagreeable kind of guy. I have a very confrontational, uh, like, my default setting is is to be confrontational. So when you ask me a question like, so I guess Devin deleted her social media, that says to me that you are somehow doubting that. Of course she fucking did it. One thing you're going to learn about me, Mr. Duffy, is that I never advise men to do things that I haven't or am not doing. If I sell, if I tell women to delete their social media, that's what the fuck Devin did, man. You guys are killing me. The Neg One says you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Says, I have too many soldiers that have stepkids now. The blue pill epidemic is happening too often. Yeah, man. That's for damn sure. That is for damn sure. God, the stories of the military, man. Those are um, those are sad. Those are sad. All right, guys. Hell of a show today. Hell of a show today. I am... As um, soon as I get off the air, I'm going to... I'm going to go drink some water and... Um, Take some pre-workout and go lift some weights down in the TSR gym. Big thanks again goes out to Jenik Latalian with the 20 Hong Kong dollars. Nonstop Dre $62. G-Bull $50. $1.99. Levi Baloo $2. Gravelite $5. The Neg $24. Freelance Ronin $5. Janik with another 25 Hong Kong dollars says Tom Lake has summed it up in eight words. Long hair, stays thin, sex anytime, shut up. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah, that listen, that sounds about right to me. It sounds about right to me. I can't stand girls with short hair, man. Jesus. Jesus. Grow your hair out, ladies. Black women. Grow your hair out. Enough of this enough of this fake nonsense. <clears throat> that is going to do it for this edition of TSR Live. Many thanks to everyone who has contributed via Super Chat and the donations. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>